the market caps how tata large and mid cap is positioned and how it can generate alpha for the investors they cannot be over dependent on china for all the products all the even things like from mobile phones to chemicals to raw materials look around yourself you would find a brand has almost grabbed you as it is offering everything you can ask for think for apparel automobile air carriers power chemical consultancy and what not tata the most trusted brand in india carrying its reputation and legacy across the globe and today i would like to invite mr rahul singh from tata am singh as a cio of equities thank you sir for coming to our show thank you very much for having me as we understand in every business where tata has its footprints it is at least in the top 5 so when we can expect tata amc to crack that milestone too a very good question actually uh, we um, have actually been gaining market share over the last 4 5 years uh, we are now almost uh, 10 in the top 10 uh and i think uh, what we are doing right now is making sure that we have our processes right our team right and our growth aspirations right uh, so if you look at last 2 3 years uh, there was an increased momentum in terms of first the new products and the new nfos uh, after that we have caught up performance uh, going our lot of our funds are showing good performance improvement and sustained performances and because of that uh, and because of the visibility which as you rightly mentioned data brand has uh, but we have to follow that up with performance and process and connect win the market uh, which is what uh, we are doing now and we have been doing for the last 4 5 years uh, and as a result of that we have been gradually in you know improving our market share like i mentioned uh, so if we go like this and think in uh, next uh, few years when definitely our aspiration is to be not happy we will just be top 10 uh, we obviously want to keep growing and uh, make sure that uh, we deserve to be uh, there when you know uh, where our you know where our aspirations are right. so i think that's the that's the game plan we have we don't want to think too much about it at the same time have that aspiration to grow uh, and make sure that we keep gaining market share by doing things in a right way uh, and not necessarily taking uh, shortcuts at the same time right asset management industry is one of the most challenging shot currently in india as many players are pitching in additionally you have to gain the confidence and trust of investors so how tata is building in terms of practices to ensure the same yes so as i mentioned i think uh, our basic uh, philosophy was uh, to set the processes in place follow those processes with discipline Uh, so as some of you might know we follow for example just to give you an example our investment philosophy is growth at reasonable price uh, we have been fairly disciplined on that and and i think it is showing results in the last 4 5 years similarly our team is uh, been uh, quite stable i would say in the last 4 uh, 5 years uh, and having a stable team both at the top level and the mid level and the junior level uh, also builds its own uh, continuity in the thought process and continuity in the fund management practices so that is the second thing which i would say is uh, it is something which we are very very focused on uh, the third thing is more about you know visibility and making sure that we are connected with our channel partners with our investors uh, by doing uh, interactions and you know events like the the one we are doing now uh, to explain how we are going about it to explain uh that we are serious uh to explain what changes we have made and how that is resulting in uh, growth for us and the fact that we uh, we want to continue to uh, be on that path right uh, for many more years okay coming to the markets investors are in dilemma some feel it's the top some feel it's a long way to go and some have theories on the general elections coming up in 24 what are your thoughts on the same So again a uh, very important question and very relevant question I think uh, today India is going through a very very significant uh, change in the uh, sentiment in the eyes of global investors uh, even though uh, you know there are various global risks in terms of geopolitical risk or in terms of interest rates going up or crude prices uh, what is helping India is that in India 
if you look at the economy last 10 years till 2020, it was running only mainly on consumption and exports. So it was basically running on one or two engines. Now the investment cycle has revived, which is really the third engine of the economy. Yeah. Therefore, uh, the economy is running on three engines now and not just one or two engines. And that is what is resulting in sustained growth or expectation of growth over the next three to five years. Uh, of course, India benefits because of China plus one, because of geopolitics. So all that is a, a major long-term trend over the next five to ten years, which is why uh, we don't think that India's premium valuations will correct. Uh, yes, there could be minor corrections mm -hmm. uh, here and there because of the global risk, but uh, we don't expect a very big correction in the valuations uh, as they stand today. Uh, but are the valuations very cheap? No, they are definitely not cheap. But are they in the bubble zone where one should be extremely careful? I also don't think that is the case. So this is a market to stay invested in equities and this is a market to manage your risk while you are invested in the equities and not just avoid equities or get scared uh, of equities just because the market is rallied. Because uh, as I mentioned, valuations are not cheap but they are not in a territory where I could call it a bubble or where I could call it a uh, a dangerous kind of a, a market. So how does one manage the risk right. while staying invested is what we should be focused on. And there are various ways to do it, primarily being an asset allocation between debt and equity to focus on hybrid products like uh, the balanced advantage fund. Right. Uh, and also have a good mix of hybrid products and you know diversified funds like large and mid-cap value funds and some of the thematic funds. So I think this is the market to make sure that you're managing your risks and not necessarily avoiding equities or getting getting into this uh, mindset that just because there are risks, one should be avoiding equities. As far as general elections are concerned, yes. since you mentioned that, uh, you know, nobody knows what can or cannot happen in elections. Uh, as things don't stand today, the risk of any negative surprise seems to be less. Mm -hmm. And we need to keep watching as we come closer to elections. Uh, but I would not necessarily make it as a big risk factor at this point. Yes, definitely. You know, some pundits have theories that if this party wins, then market will run. And if this party loses, market will, uh, you know, will be bleeding. So do you have faith in such theories or, you know, like, how do you see it? No, what I can definitely say without getting into a political discussion is that political continuity is important for the markets, for the global investors, right. for the equity investors. And therefore, uh, if there is a negative surprise and discontinuity or some kind of a change in the government, right. uh, nobody likes it. Market will not like it. Um, uh, so, so therefore, continuity is important. There is no doubt about it because a lot of the opportunities which are there for India today uh, needs a strong government to capitalize on those global opportunities in terms of manufacturing and China plus one kind of opportunities. Uh, so, so in my view, policy continuity and political continuity will be important. A strong government is important, whichever party it might be. Uh, and those are the things which, uh, at least at this point of time, uh, appears to be that the risk of uh, any dramatic uh, negative surprise seems to be there. Okay. Since you mentioned about China plus one, and if we see the current macro conditions they are facing, do you think it's a very long-term advantageous situation for India? Of course, it's a huge advantage. Uh, it is not just uh, that uh, companies want to diversify away from China because of cost reasons or so on. Uh, what the Russia-Ukraine war has also done is to make the world realize that they cannot be over dependent on China for all the products, all the even things like from mobile phones to chemicals to raw material for medicines. There is complete dependence or there is huge dependence on China. And to reverse that dependence or reduce that dependence uh, will take five to ten years. We have just started. In my view, we have just started now. Oh, yeah. and, uh, you know, this could be a uh, at least a five to ten year uh, theme and five to ten year growth opportunity for. Uh, companies in India. Okay. Lately, large and mid-cap categories have been very popular among investors due to its dynamic nature to bet, whether it's on valuation or across the market caps. How Tata large and mid-cap is positioned and how it can generate alpha for the investors? So Tata large and mid-cap is a diversified fund where uh, we have a mixed approach in terms of the kind of companies we buy. 
as I mentioned, we believe in growth at reasonable price. So uh, what we do is we have a good mix in our portfolio of companies which are stable companies where we don't expect valuations to move up, but we expect steady growth of say 10, 12, 15%. And then the other half of the portfolio, uh, we try and identify companies early in their growth curve or an earnings upgrade curve where we get benefited from not just the growth, but also the re-rating in valuations which happens. Most of the returns in the markets get made when the valuation moves and the growth happens. Uh, and so if you have a good mix uh, and manage the risk of buying some stable companies where we don't expect valuation to move up, but we expect at least 10-15% steady growth, and combine it with companies where we expect both to move up, obviously we'll be taking risk while right. that. Um, uh, so it's a pretty bottom-up portfolio, uh, very focused on valuation uh, and identifying companies which can go through this earning upgrade cycle uh, and therefore result in a the overall return from the portfolio, which can uh, you know which can you know beat the index. Um, so far, uh, you know obviously over the last three to five years, we've done a good job. If I think if we stay disciplined on this approach. Uh, we are quite optimistic that large and mid-cap is a very good space to capture the changes which are happening in the economy. At the same time, have a bottom-up approach of uh, portfolio manager. As you said, that it's a more of a bottom-up portfolio. So, is it so that you completely ignore macros or don't rely on macros? Like, how it goes? So, macros cannot be completely ignored. Uh, right. Because ultimately, we are also managing public money. We have to be aware of the benchmark. Uh, which is why I said that 50% of our portfolio or roughly uh, would be of companies which are stable in nature. Uh, probably uh, it will have some of the benchmark names. Um, but there also we have a valuation disciplined approach. We are not, um, uh, you know, we are not going to buy stocks which are very expensive or right. very cheap just because they are cheap. Uh, so we follow the GARP approach even for those companies. And also uh, in terms of the... Uh, um, in, in terms of the overall return potential or in terms of the uh, overall, uh, say, uh, portfolio management, mm -hmm. we cannot completely ignore the macro because a lot of things which I mentioned, for example, China plus one, right. uh, is driven by macros, right. driven by global macro. So uh, it is, when we say bottom up, there is obviously, and there are obviously elements of macro which are also driving that bottom up uh, story. Uh, so that's the you know that's the combined approach which uh, which I think will work in the times to come, not just for large and mid cap fund, but for you know all funds. Okay, the Nifty ID index declined by fourteen percent between April twenty two and August twenty three. In September twenty three, we saw some good movement. So can we again see the rally that we saw back in COVID times? Uh, I don't think we should expect the rally which we saw in COVID times in ID anymore. Uh, the reason for that is very simple that during COVID, there was this urge by all the corporates uh, globally to spend on their digital transformation. So it led to a sudden jump in the business which was available for the IT services companies in India. Uh, after that, we have seen that things have normalized. Uh, people are spending on online, but there was a huge spurt in spending on online. Now it has kind of normalized. So we have gone back to an era where this sector will grow at steady 8, 10, 12 percent. And those are the kind of returns overall. I'm saying obviously some companies will do grow faster. So so they might give you better returns. But overall for the sector, it is going to be a steady sector from here on. One should not expect um, significantly higher returns than 10 to 15 percent in my view for this sector for the next uh, one or two years. Okay, the major negative for the Indian market is the sustained selling by FIIs. Do you think it's a red flag? I think the selling is happening for reasons which are driven again by the global interest rates. So if you look at the interest rates in US, they have now gone as in very close to 5 percent now, 10 year. Yes. And because of that, there is generally uh, a sell-off in equities, global equities, and therefore uh, some of the uh, sell-off will obviously come to emerging markets in India also. Uh, so in my view, uh, the view on India is actually turned positive in the last 6 to 12 months. The selling which you are seeing is more of a global phenomenon on equities 
um, which was uh, which had stopped till about June, July, but again it's you know kind of gone up. Uh, so I would not worry about it too much. Uh, obviously, what I would worry about is if there is a global risk off event, for example, banks collapsing or economies yeah. collapsing, uh, then I would think that this selling can become more sustained and can really damage the market valuations much more. Right now, I think the selling is at a level which is getting balanced by um, full amount or sometimes more amount of uh, buying which is happening you know, from the domestic side. Uh, so right now there is a balance, but uh, what we need to watch out is there should not be any global risk of event, okay. either geopolitical or related to interest rates in terms of what we saw, for example, some time back, the bank collapses in the US. Uh, but that also, you know, this time I think India is better prepared to withstand uh, those impacts uh, as compared to what happened in 2008. Right. Is it like, are we now more independent of the Western markets? We should not call ourselves completely independent. What I would say is that we are uh, more, uh, we will be more uh, uh, stronger right. this time around in terms of our ability to withstand any uh, global shocks as compared to what we were in 2008. The reason is very simple. In 2008, our banks were weak, our corporate sector had very high debt. Uh, our fiscal deficit was higher, our current account uh, deficit and, um, you know, our global, our debt levels were higher as a country, as a, as a government, on the government side. All those things have changed. Uh, we are much stronger on some of these parameters. More importantly, I think the banking sector is strong. Uh, corporate sector has very low debt. And also, more importantly, the investment cycle is reviving. Whereas in 2008, uh, we had seen three, four years of investment cycle and after that it took a huge talk. Whereas True. today, we are just at the beginning of the investment cycle. So these are the factors which are different. Obviously, it does not mean that we will be completely insulated if there is a global risk of event. Right. But uh, at least this time, we are slightly better prepared is what I would uh, say. Perfect. So in the end, I would like to thank you for such insightful sessions. Thank you very much. Viewers, thank you for tuning in. Investment in securities market are subject to market risk. Read all the related documents carefully before investing.